Hi, my name is Sean Holland, and I'm the Media Innovation Manager here at UAF eCampus. Uh, my presentation at ASTI for 2022 is on free, open, Alaska-focused courses on edX. Thank you for your interest in this presentation. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, I'm going to put a lot of links and resources here in the description of this video. So since April 2020, UAF has been a partner with edX. And on the platform, our courses are known as AlaskaX. Now, edX is an online sort of global marketplace for learning. They have over 34 million global learners from every country in the world and over 150 partners, most of which are universities. edX was founded in 2013 by Harvard and MIT and has since grown into a consortium of many different university partners. On the platform, there are over 3,000 courses. Uh, over 20% of learners on the edX platform are from the United States, which means that 80% of all those learners are outside of the United States, so it's a very global platform. Our courses that UAF has offered so far in the platform are a little bit more heavy with the United States audience, but you can see there's some strong interest in some specific countries, particularly India, where a lot of our learners are hailing from. So you may be asking, what is an edX course? What is UAF doing on edX? What does Alaska X mean? You may be familiar with the term MOOC, M-O-O-C. A MOOC is a massive open online course. This term has been around since 2012, 2013. In the heyday of MOOCs, you had courses with 100,000, 200,000 learners at a single time. It was a really innovative moment in uh, online education. There are still MOOCs with that number of people, but the uh, market has expanded. And 10 years later, platforms like edX, Coursera, and FutureLearn are providing content to uh, a broader audience of career track learners who are really focused on gaining specific skills. There's still a wide variety of courses on the platform, but a lot of the courses now are uh, marketed toward people who are um, trying to Im improve their careers, pad their resumes, those kinds of things. So UAF's courses on Alaska X are open, they're accessible, they're free, and they're focused on the Circumpolar North and its peoples, which is core to UAF's mission. So these courses are open access, meaning all the content in it is free. You don't have to pay for it. It's licensed in an open manner. These courses are accessible. They all ha have captions that are very accurate. And they're free via what we call the audit track, which is a uh, open access, total access to the course within the limited time period that the course is offered. So why are these free? How can UAF offer courses online for free? It's really about the edX mission and the mission of Alaska X as it aligns to UAF's core missions. Uh, edX has the mission to increase access to high quality education for everyone everywhere. And for Alaska X, we want to share UAF's expertise with as many people as we can across the world. Now, many of you have possibly taken courses from the University of Alaska, UAF, UAA, UAS, or other institutions of higher education. And as you know, academic credit is not cheap. Our courses are not credit bearing at the moment. So if you take a course on edX, you take it for free, or you take what we call the verified track, which is a paid track, you're getting access to content, you're getting um, open content, you may be even getting a verified certificate if you choose to pay for that, but you're not getting uh, an academic credit. And that's pretty important. So I wanted to highlight one of our flagship courses on the platform that is very Alaska focused. It's a wonderful learning experience. And I just want to play the first 20 to 30 seconds of this video from a course called Salmon, People and Place by Dr. Peter Wesley, which has run three times now on the platform. It's just finishing up its third run this week, in fact. And we had the pleasure this run of a, a sixth grade class from a school here in Fairbanks joining the open course and going along through the modules and joining a discussion of, of learners from all across the world, including a cohort from, uh, from Russia. One thing I love about this course is that in the three times it's run, we've seen these really interesting social connections occur of people who did not 
know each other before the course, but have found a common connection through this shared interest in this amazing species, salmon. In fact, one of the students in the second run of the course was a nine-year-old from Pennsylvania who actually sent Dr. Wesley a, a crayon drawing of a salmon and a thank you letter for offering the course. In North America, no single wild animal has been more important to the cultures, the economies, and connecting people to place than wild salmon. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Wesley, an associate professor of fisheries at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and welcome to this course on edX called Salmon, People, and Place. Over the next few weeks, we're gonna explore the connections between salmon and people, and the intersections between economies and cultures, and all of the challenges that are facing salmon in the 21st century. So, what does a MOOC, what does an edX course actually contain? What does it entail? What makes it different from a regular course? And you may be asking these questions skeptically. Why should I share these with my sixth graders or my, my uh, 11th graders? All of these courses are very intentionally designed. If you've taken an, uh, even an online course, even a good online course with a lot of instructor engagement, sometimes you don't have a lot of guidance except for the syllabus, some discussion boards, some readings, a list of uh, assignments. An edX course doesn't leave anything up in the air, doesn't leave anything to chance in terms of what a learner knows they have to do. The course design is very intentional, focused on written content, videos, text with exercises, automated feedback, discussion boards. The courses are also original. We're not copy and pasting content from somewhere. They're, they're not textbook reliant. And they all feature videos that are custom produced for these courses hosted directly in the edX platform itself. As I said, these are, these are accessible. These are totally accessible to folks who rely on screen readers, uh, who need captions, those kinds of things. They're also cohesive, which means that we're not linking out to these third party resources that you then, you know, you get a PDF on your desktop and you have to switch back and forth from, from between tabs or, or browser windows or something like that. Everything is uh, contained within the same seamless learning experience, which improves learner engagement because they don't, you don't give them these reasons to, to kind of get tripped up and distracted by these, these third party sites. As I said, it's all open, it's in the public domain or it's been uh, used with permission or paid for by our organization. And last, these courses are connected. There's uh, frequent communication sent to learners. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of interesting opportunities for learner to learner connections across a global learning community. Right now we have um, 12 courses on the platform. <clears throat> uh, six of them are part of professional certificates. One is on sport business management. One is on geographic information systems. Some of our other shorter courses on Arctic security fundamentals, One Health, Salmon People Place, as I mentioned, and um, climate change and Arctic environments are ones I'd like to touch on along with the GIS, and GIS uh, courses that I think might have some purchase or some applicability to a K-12 environment. That's the audience I, I, I presume to be talking to here. Our professional certificate in geographic information systems is comprised of three courses. Each course is four weeks long, so it's a 12-week program, and it goes through basic concepts of geographic information systems, a little bit of remote sensing, uh, and it focuses on ArcGIS Pro software, which is an industry standard piece of software. One thing to point out is that in the audit track of these courses, the free track, your access is based on how long the course is scheduled to run. So all of these courses are four weeks long. If you signed up for GIS Foundations on January 1st, you would have access to that course as a, an audit track free learner through January, end of the day, January 28th, four weeks. If you signed up for all three courses at the same time, you'd have access to those three courses for the same period of time over that, period of, over that um, four week period. So if you're interested in doing a sequence of courses and you want, you know you're not gonna be able to afford the verified track, definitely segment them out. Start one, finish it, then wait to start the second one or the third one. I mentioned our climate change course. This is a, really a brilliant introduction for novices, 
people who are not scientifically literate as a research scientist here at UAF might be. It's focused on atmospheric, ocean, earth, and human systems. And it really strikes a good balance between the basics of climate science with really cutting edge research, global climate modeling. It also takes a very, um, it's not a sensationalized course. It is all about the hard science and all about uh, on the ground experiences of people in the Arctic. And it would be a really foundational and interesting course to connect to certain science themes, I think, in um, the high school core curriculum. Our One Health course is also pretty interesting. It's eight weeks long. It's a little bit longer than most courses, but its approach to this concept of human health, animal health, and environmental health connecting to inform the health of all three of those, those systems is really interesting. It also does a, a very admirable job of integrating traditional ways of knowing and this indigenous uh, worldview and indigenous knowledge into connecting that with modern uh, Western medical science. This course brings new learners to this concept. It takes these expert resources, folks, experts from across the world focused on epidemiology and uh, food security. All these different things come together in this seamless learning experience that focuses on this unique view of One Health. And it's a self-paced course. Our course on remote sensing of wildfires, led by Dr. Santosh Panda, who also leads the GIS courses, is actually the one course we designed with a high school learner in mind. The content in the course is based on in-person trainings that Dr. Panda did with high school students across the state pre-pandemic. The course uses open source software called QGIS to basically give learners a handle on using open data resources to do really interesting problem solving with remote sensing and um, apply it to a, a wildfire, a remote sensing of, of wildfire burn scars and, and wildfire patterns. Uh, but a lot of the skills that a learner would gain from this course are actually pretty applicable to, to um, concepts beyond wildfires. It's also really Alaska focused and is a great little uh, chunk. It's a good in, uh, kind of a taster course, a teaser course, if you, if you will, of our broader courses on the platform. And as I said, it's aimed at high school students, college freshmen. Although in practice, interestingly, we've seen a lot of people taking this course who have undergraduate degrees, who have advanced degrees, and they're just interested in uh, gaining these skills to apply it to their their own, own experiences and their use cases. There was one student who worked for a national park in South Africa and did controlled burns. These resources and the techniques in this course were applicable to that use case. We really didn't predict that when we designed the course, but it's useful. it was useful to that person. And so seeing, simply being exposed to those different use cases as a learner in the course, I think is eye-opening and contributes to these learning experiences. So if you are interested in accessing any of these courses, they are all free. They all have an audit track. Anyone can sign up. There's no age limit. We've had many people from, from all different age groups and, and locations access these courses. You can go to edX.org slash AlaskaX, create an account, join a course. And if you have any questions for me, specifically this presentation about Alaska X or really anything, you can email me at smholland.alaska.edu. I'm on Twitter. If you feel like engaging professionally on Twitter at Sean Holland. And I'll put those things and some other links right there in the description. Thank you. Thanks for uh, listening and enjoy the rest of your conference at Aspen this year.